What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. Today I have another new episode of Tier List Tuesdays for you guys. Last week we did a Tier List video on all of Nintendo's handheld consoles. Here are some of the responses we got from you guys in last week's episode. Today I'm going to be doing a Tier List video on all of the Super Mario 3D World power-ups. This game is right around the corner. It's set to be released this upcoming week on Nintendo Switch plus the addition of Bowser's Fury Mode. I'm very excited about this. Make sure you guys are subscribed with notifications turned on so you don't miss out on any of the content that I post of Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury. So I thought I'd go ahead and review some of the, uh, I mean, all of the power-ups essentially in this game. I mean, why not, you know? We'll see where the power-ups are ranked, you know, before we actually delve into this game once again. So uh, without further ado, let's jump straight into this week's episode of Tier List Tuesdays. So we're going to be starting out with the uh, returning power-ups. So in this game, you have returning power-ups, you have new power-ups, and then you have these things called support items. So they're not technically power-ups but they're items that allow you to do things that you couldn't normally do with mario luigi peach toad rosalina etc etc so the first power-up we're going to be ranking is of course the super mushroom super mushroom turns mario into super mario and all of the other characters of course into their super version it's in every single mario game and it's a power-up that is essential for Mario's transformations. It's, it's good to have because, you know, it gives you that additional hit before you get another hit and then you die. But for me, I, it doesn't really excite me. I never look at a mushroom in a Mario game I'm like, oh my God, it's a mushroom. So, you know, not to diss the power up, to say like something's wrong with it, I'm gonna give it a bad rank. It's just a super mushroom. You could pick up a fire flower or anything else and then you jump straight from baby Mario into that, you know, into that power up and you skip over the super mushroom. But when you get hit by one of these power ups, you go back into super mushroom, unless you're a super mushroom. Obviously you guys know, I'm not here to explain it to y'all. But uh, I'm gonna go ahead and rank the super mushroom as an A because like I said, it's not all out. It doesn't wow me like that. And at the same time, you know, it's still uh, a very important power up. It's in every single Mario game, I'm sure. So why not rank it the A rank? Moving on, we have the Fire Flower. So the Fire Flower, of course, turns Mario into Fire Mario and all of the other characters as well into their fire selves. They also have uh, new outfits, which is pretty cool. And then also the ability to shoot fire out of their hands. Uh, one of the pretty awesome things about the Fire Flower is that you can shoot fire underwater. Obviously, that doesn't make sense logically, but in the Super Mario world, it makes total sense. You could shoot fire underwater, and I always thought this was an OP power-up. It's always nice to have one of these on deck. You know, you could speed through enemies uh, without having to worry too much. So I'm going to go ahead and rank the Fire Flower the S rank because it is worthy of that. You know, I'd choose a fire. We'd, we'd all choose a Fire Flower over a Mushroom any day. Let's be real. Next up, we have the Boomerang Flower. The Boomerang Flower allows the character to turn into a boomerang. <laughs> well, not really. He... He has the ability to throw a boomerang uh, at items or enemies, and uh, it's a pretty cool power-up. It's kind of a little bit lesser than the Fire Flower. The Fire Flower is like a direct hit, and you can shoot many fireballs at one given moment. You know, there's not like, oh, there's only one fireball at a time. Uh, with the boomerang, unfortunately, you only could throw one boomerang at a time, and uh, it's essentially meant to hit at enemies or obtain items. It's more so for me used to obtain items. I wouldn't normally go out of my way to attack enemies using the boomerang. I feel like that's kind of a slower way to defeat enemies. So because of that, it's not a bad power up, but because it's like a weaker fire flower, uh, I'm going to go ahead and give the boomerang suit, uh, you know, the beamer, the, the B rank, because why not? I, I, I always end up skipping over them. Like I don't get excited when I see them, when I, when I see them and they're right there for the grabs. I'm just like, well, it's a boomerang. I mean, do I really want it? I'll, I'll get something else. Next up, we have the Super Leaf. So this power-up turns you into Tanuki, Mario, Peach, Luigi, Toad, Rosalina, whatever you want. And uh, it essentially allows you to float uh, and allows you to whack your tail on enemies. So it gives Mario and other characters an advantage, I guess you could say, because you can hit people with your tail. At the same time, you could uh, flutter through the sky. Uh, unfortunately, unlike other Mario games, the 2D Mario games, you can't like have running starts with this and end up flying as much as you would like. I mean, but it's always for a specific period of time. But I mean, you could do it as many times as you want, essentially. So it's not the same as other you know, Tanuki Leafs in other Mario games. So because of that, 
I'm going to have to rank the Tanuki Leaf in this game. I'm going to have to give it the B rank. It's, it's, it's not all that exciting, honestly, you know? So far, the, the Fire Flower is, is the best, in my humble opinion. It's just the most OP so far. Next up, we have the Invincibility Leaf. So this is essentially a Tanuki Leaf, but it's given to you when Nintendo pities you. When they take pity on you after you've attempted to beat a level so many times, yet you continually die, Nintendo's like, you know what? We're going to give you the Invincibility Leaf. So essentially, you become a... Uh, a white tanuki version of whoever character you're playing as and you are able to run into enemies without taking any damage the only thing that will stop you uh, is falling off the map or actually falling into lava but other than that you could pretty much destroy your way through anything and i think it's one of the cheapest items possibly in the entire if it's, it is definitely the cheapest item i personally never use it because of the fact that i feel like this is just like Come on, you took you had so much pity on me that you decided to give me this this power up. So it's kind of offensive in a way to me. So uh, because of because of that, I'm gonna have to rank it the D rank. I would never ever ever, you know, resort to using one of these. It's just like I can beat the level. I don't need this. And it's it's funny because when I watch other people play 3D World and then they are stomped on a specific level, they never end up using this either. They'll always end up beating the level, they'll find a way, but they will not resort to using the Invincibility Leaf. Next up, we have the Mega Mushroom. So the Mega Mushroom, of course, is a mushroom, but a Mega version of a mushroom. It turns you into a Mega version of yourself, and any character can use it in this game. Uh, it's a pretty awesome item because you're so big that you can literally plow your way through everything and anything that's in front of you. It lasts for a very short amount of time, but it's a, a nice power-up to have, especially in certain levels because, you know, there's some hidden collectibles here and there that needs, you know, a big dude or a big gal to just, you know, ram its way through all the, 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 the commotion and unlock and discover what's really hidden beneath all of the blocks. So, uh, I really enjoy the Mega Mushroom, and it was also in a couple of uh, the New Super Mario Bros. games, I believe. I think it was in New Super Mario Bros. DS. I don't recall if it made its way to other Mario games, uh, other New Super Mario Bros. games. But, nonetheless, I think it's a pretty nice power-up. I'm gonna go ahead and give this the A rank. Nobody ever turns down a giant mushroom. I'll tell you that much. Every time I see one of these ready for grabs, I always end up grabbing it. And the final item that we have here, the final power-up, rather, that we have here from the reoccurring power-ups is, of course, the Superstar. So, the Superstar turns you into Invisible Mario, Luigi, Peach, Toad, Rosalina. Obviously, you guys know what the Superstar does. It's in virtually every single Mario game. Uh, it's something nice to have. Mario and whoever obtains it, they run really fast for a short period of time. Obviously, they become invisible, so no damage is done to them. Except, of course, for falling off the course or falling directly into lava. That doesn't... The Superstar will not save you from those two things. So, it's not all that, you know, super. But still, nonetheless, it always proves to be worthy whenever you get one of these bad boys. So, I'm going to go ahead and rank the Superstar, of course, the S rank. Because it is indeed super and deserves nothing less than than being super all right so that was it for the returning power-ups now moving on we have the new power-ups and these are only but a few so the first of which is going to be the super bell you start off with this power-up at the beginning of the game uh, it turns you into a cat version of whoever character you're playing as it's a pretty nice power-up because it allows the pair the, the character the player to climb uh, walls to climb poles uh, to do little uh, you know forward jumps with your hands that allow you to take out enemies you know you get all these cat like abilities which really do help you out a lot and uh, we're gonna we're gonna be seeing a lot of this especially in uh, 3d world and Bowser's Fury mode of course it's probably gonna be the most overused power-up that we use and I think it's one of the most OP power-ups for sure especially when you're playing using this power-up uh, with Blue Toad he is so fast it is insane so I'm gonna go ahead and rank the Super Bell uh, I'm gonna give that the S rank because it is indeed a super bell. Shut up!
Next up, we have the double cherries. Uh, the double cherry, rather, it's, it's a singular cherry. Uh, essentially, when you eat the cherry, it multiplies you, and you can eat your, the cherry many times over, and you'll continue to get multiple versions of yourself, which allows you to activate certain things that require more than just one player. Also allows you to defeat certain enemies, but at the same time, it can be very confusing. And every time I use one of these things, I always think to myself, which one's the real one? Because what if the real one dies, and then the clone is the one that stays live the clone is the one that continues to beat the rest of the game now i know that's a little deep you know for a video game but still it's a thought that always crosses my mind whenever i'm uh playing this game and i'm not really too crazy about the cherry power up i think it's cool very very cool power up for sure to have uh but if you're always playing the game multiplayer it's not really necessary and it can create for a lot of commotion and confusion and you don't really get too far with it because you always end up losing your squad members that are duplicates of the cherry power up so i'm gonna go ahead and rank the cherry power up c c for cherry not really my cup of tea but i mean it looks really cool look at that all these power ups man they look so nice I could eat that cherry power up, honestly. And then the final power up that we have from the new power ups here in Super Mario 3D World is the Lucky Bell. So the Lucky Bell is a bronze bell that also transforms Mario and the other players into uh, the cat version of themselves with the same abilities as the Super Bell. Um, however, it also turns you invincible. You can become a statue if you wanted to. Uh, so whenever you ground pound, essentially, you can become a statue. It allows you to just ground pound your way on enemies without taking any damage, to hit certain blocks, to collect coins, all that good stuff. Uh, and it begins, and it only appears uh, in the special worlds of this game. So it's essentially like the Super Bell, but just slightly different, nothing too crazy. Um, I kind of think it's a little bit annoying, you know, when you're constantly turning into statues. So I wouldn't really pick this up if I had a choice. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, give this the D rank because it's, it's, it ain't really my cup of tea, to be honest with you guys. All right. So that is it for all of the power ups. Now we're going to be doing the support items. We're going to be ranking those. Uh, there's about uh, there's quite a few, actually. And I know some of you guys might be thinking, Sully, why would you rank them? They're not really power-ups. I get it, but they give you different abilities, uh, and they're kind of like power-ups. You wear this thing or whatever it may be, or you're utilizing something, and then boom. You know, it, it changes yourself for just a short period of time. It changes your abilities for just a small period of time. And uh, in my opinion, that is a kind of like a power up. So I'm going to go ahead and rank them, starting with the question block. The question block are shiny blocks. And of course, we all know when we see a question block, we're tempted to hit it. These shiny question blocks, however, allow you to wear the question block on your head once you've hit it. And then coins will continuously spawn just as long as you keep moving. The more you move, the more coins will spawn. I think this was introduced in New Super Mario Bros. 2 on Nintendo 3DS. I could be wrong, though. I don't actually know for sure, but I do remember that being in that game. And then it obviously, you know, it made its way to this game. It's a cool, fun power up to have. You know, it makes you kind of want to run fast. It influences you to do more, to run more, to make more distance because obviously you're trying to collect a lot more coins. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and rank this. Uh, honestly, the C, it's, it's nothing too crazy. I mean, it's nice to have. It's pretty fun to use, but it's not like it's... Uh, it's a crazy power up like that. Next up, we have the cannon box. So this is just like the question box. You essentially hit it from underneath and you're wearing the cannon box. It allows you to shoot as many cannons as you'd like. So long as you do not get hit, it is a power up that you wear and it is extremely useful. You could break through boxes, you could break through walls, certain walls, not all walls, of course. You can uh, obviously hit enemies and you can even shoot down your own friends that are playing with you if you really want to troll them. I love this power up a lot. I'm going to go ahead and rank it the A rank because it's a really fun power up to use whenever I do run into one of these things. I always tend to grab it, but you know, it's always short lived because I can't hold on to it for that long. Next up, we have the green shell. So the green shell is a power up that you obtain from the Koopas. Essentially, you're able to hit blocks and defeat enemies with it. It's pretty nice to have and it also changes colors depending on the user that you're using. I think it's a pretty cool power up. It's very, very nice to have. Uh, you could use it in some of the levels, uh, but you know, I don't really tend to use it that much. So because of that, I'm going to go ahead and rank it the C rank. Don't get me wrong. When I'm ranking these, by the way, I'm not like saying all the stuff in the D rank. Maybe. Okay. 
the stuff in the C rank is like bad. It's just I don't really use it. So it's whatever to me. Next up, we have the Goomba mask. So uh, I don't know if you guys remember this, but in Paper Mario, the Origami King, they had a very similar item. You wear this Goomba uh paper macho goomba and you're essentially you blend in with the goombas this is the, this does the same thing you wear a goomba mask and the goombas will not attack you i don't know why you would want to wear a goomba mask to blend in with the goombas and you're to be scared of the goombas you know to me it's kind of a little silly goombas are harmless pretty much you can easily take them out like that um so i'm gonna go ahead and rank this one at the d rank because I would never really find myself wearing a Goomba mask. I do not want to blend in with the Goombas. Do not mistake me for the Goombas. I'm not a Goomba. All right, next up is the light box. So the light box is also another box that you hit from beneath. And once you're wearing it, you can turn light on. So this is needed for some of the levels in Super Mario 3D World. Uh, obviously, if you could go without having to use it, it would be nice. But at the same time, the only significance that it offers is, uh, is, is is light so I mean it proves to be useful in some situations and scenarios while you're playing the game but if it were a common item around the whole game you would definitely not see me using it because I would prefer to have other abilities than this ability it's not really my cup of tea so I'm gonna go ahead and also rank this the D rank Next up, we have the Piranha Plant. So I believe the Piranha Plant item made its way for the first time in a Mario series here in Super Mario 3D World. You also see this in Mario Kart 8. Uh, it's a pretty nice item to have because you pick up a pot with a Piranha Plant in it and then it essentially, you know, bites whatever is in front of you or whatnot. Uh, it eats enemies, it also collects coins for you, and you can also attack other players while playing multiplayer, so you can, you know, take someone's crown, for example, if you wanted to. It's a really nice item, I like it a lot. It's very, very useful for sure, especially when you wanna troll one of your buddies while playing. I'm gonna go ahead and rank the Piranha Plant in A rank. Next up, we have the Propeller Box. So just like the other boxes, of course, you hit this from underneath, and the difference between this and all the other ones is this one allows you to propel. And so long as you're wearing it, you can propel for as, ever, for, as, for as long as you'd like, essentially. It's a pretty nice item, and it's also in other Mario games, which serves the same exact purpose. I really, really love this. It helps you, uh, you know, clear through levels way quicker if you, would, if you wanted to, if that's your thing. For me, because I would tend to use it a lot, uh, and I think the, the ability that it offers is pretty nice, I'm going to go ahead and rank this the S rank. You know, you would uh, you would think that the Tanuki would be equal to this almost, but nah, this is like the perfected item over the Tanuki if you're really looking to get some of that air time. So next up, we have the ice skates. The ice skates are based on Goomba shoes. The difference is you wear it and you can skate on ice, obviously. So, I mean, it serves one purpose and that is for you to skate on ice. But at the same time, you could uh, crash into Goombas and other enemies while you're in it. But for the most part, the game doesn't really have like levels that are completely just ice levels like that, where you're riding an ice skate from start to finish. I mean, there's certain segments uh, in certain parts of the game, certain levels of the game where you use an ice skate. So it's a pretty nice item to have. But for the most part, you don't necessarily need it to clear anything of the game. But it's a cool item. I mean, it's a reference to the old school uh nintendo goomba shoe so i'm gonna go ahead and rank this one a c rank because uh you know it's it's pretty nice i wouldn't really see myself using it but at the same time it does serve some purposes like if you want to go down like an ice skate very fast you definitely should use one of these i, I think for the like ten of, some of the green star challenges that you have in those uh houses I think one of them or a couple of them revolve around using this so you got to go real quick down with using the ice skate and it can be a little bit challenging but once you know how to move on this it becomes pretty easy but yeah i mean that's gonna do it guys that is my tier list video for all of the super mario 3d world power-ups let me know what your tier list looks like down in the comment section below i'd love to know uh, you guys might be a little bit upset, you know, for the boomerang and the tanuki. But then again, like I said, I tried to give a reason for every single one of these power-ups why I ranked it the way I did. So, you know, to each their own opinion, you guys can obviously feel free to uh, differ with me in the comment section below. I'm always open to a discussion. But other than that, thank you for watching. Make sure you're subscribed with notifications turned on so you don't miss out any 
of the Super Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury content set to be released at the end of this week. I'm very excited. So yeah, I'll definitely be seeing you guys then. Peace.